Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can make your own prickly pear cactus juice and how to make your own prickly pear cactus syrup out of the prickly pear cactus fruit. So you'll have the blossoms that'll show up and when they do they'll produce this wonderful fruit later on. So when you handle the fruit definitely be careful because there are sometimes some little spines in them so sometimes they'll tend to poke you. We'll go ahead and just cut the bottoms off and the tops. We're going to go ahead and split the skin down the middle. And then we're going to take your finger and just peel the skin right off. And that fruit is just beautiful. It's a rich dark red. Now you can go ahead and eat the fruit raw as it is once you've peeled it but there are still quite a bit of seeds left in them so if you do eat the fruit make sure that you chew it very carefully because those seeds are pretty tough. Some people tend to throw the skins away but I'm not going to do that because there is still quite a bit of meat left on those skins so I'm just going to go ahead and split the skins in pieces and I'm going to gently take my knife and fillet that meat off the skin. Now if you look how thin that skin is compared to all the meat that's still left on it, that's quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and do that with the whole thing. I'm going to toss the skin because I don't need that. Take that meat, let it go to the side. and just fillet this. So this has still got quite a bit of juice in it, so we definitely don't want to waste any of that. I have a really big bag of fruit here, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this until I get all my fruit done, and then I'll show you what we can do from there. I finally got all my prickly pears completely all cut up. I also have all the meat from all those skins. Now, as you can tell, that's a lot of meat that would have been wasted otherwise. So let's go ahead and get juicing these. Now that we've got our juicing process completely finished, you can see it's got some pulp in there, and that is fine. Um, if you want to make a good jam with this, you can go ahead and use it as it is. It'll be perfectly fine. You can even pour this into popsicle molds and use that as a summertime treat and freeze it for the summertime. Um, if you want to use this as a juice, you definitely do want to strain some of that pulp out, thin it with a little bit of water, and uh, you can add some sweetener to it if you want to. This does have a wonderful watermelon type flavor to it. This does stain, however, so you might want to be careful with it when you're working with it. Also, um, it is from a succulent, so the juice is kind of slimy. And again, you know, it's got some of the same properties that aloe vera does. So this is a wonderful treat to even to use as a medicinal. So um, because I'll be making a syrup with this this time, and I will maybe consider making a jelly with it, I need to strain out all that pulp. And all of this juice actually came from those skins, and this is all the juice that came from the fruit. So that's quite a bit of juice that would have been missed if you don't strain out or use the skins. I just made a little sleeve, a little sock here. And you can see it really it really is slimy, guys. <laughs> Just going to pour that in there. And I'm going to lift that sock up. This is one I just did by hand. Let's hand sewed it real nice. Start to squeeze my bag. Let's set these jars back here. I take that jar and just 
gently squeeze that juice. I don't want to have any of that pulp coming out and again I just want to get just that clean juice. So this will take a minute or so. I'll be back when I get this done. Now that we've got our cactus juice completely finished and strained and got all the pulp and stuff out of it, now it's time to go ahead and make our syrup. Now I've got some local raw honey here. I've got about a cup of it. I've been getting my honey from a lady by the name of Nikki. She sells uh, local raw honey that's unfiltered. It is just wonderful. And her bees have been pollinating some watermelon fields. Now because this prickly pear cactus has a watermelon flavor to it, I figured this would go really, really well with this honey. Now you can make it other ways. You can make your syrup with sugars and whatnot, but I don't like using refined sugar, so I like using the local raw honey instead. I'll add about three to four tablespoons for one cup of honey. I'll just go ahead and start mixing that, my whisk. I want to mix it up really, really well so everything starts to blend. And that's about there. So I'll go ahead and continue whisking this then I'll go ahead and put it in a jar. Once you have finished making your prickly pear syrup, go ahead and put it in a jar and label it so you know exactly what it is. Also, if you have any juice left over, go ahead and put that in a jar and label it as well. You can use the juice in other treats and other kinds of syrups, jams, jellies. It is just delightful. It is a wonderful treat. What I'll be doing with the rest of my juice is I'm going to be canning it and I'll also be making a jelly with it. So if you're interested in watching a video on how to make prickly pear jelly, go ahead and continue watching for updates for my channel. Also, if you're very interested in learning about where you can purchase this wonderful honey from, I will go ahead and post the links in the video description so you can make sure you can get your own watermelon honey. Um, the beekeeper, she also, Nikki is her name, she has some wildflower honey as well as some buckwheat honey and carrot honey. Oh my goodness, it's delicious. Go ahead and tell her that Ellie from Basic Homesteading and Survival sent you. But for now, if you like this video, come back for more tips and tricks later on. Bye now. Oh, well, you gotta be so slimy. Why? Why? I do not like the slime. I do not like it. Like Ghostbusters, I've been slimed. What?